Hi, it's Wednesday, it's three o'clock. Welcome to Together Unlocked, brought to you today from East London, the West Midlands, and also Hastings. So we're Together 2012. We were set up following the festival of the same name in Newham in 2013. We were the main London Paralympics host borough, and we're creating a cultural legacy in the London borough of Newham and beyond. So in usual times, we run a programme of free creative clubs, workshops for disabled people and anyone who they want to bring with them. They take place every morning in East Ham, Monday to Friday. Today would be our pop-up poetry club, so we have a bit of a poetry theme. I'm Jude Gosling, I'm the artistic director and an artist. With me at my studio in East London is Jeannie Newman, our chair and an artist. We'll give you a bit of audio description in a minute, but first let's go over to our co-presenters in the West Midlands for some introductions and audio description. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Robin Sergener. I'm the business director of Together 2012, uh, obviously co-host of unlocked um and an artist under the name of angry fish just to let you know what i'm looking like today um i might be a pound lighter than last time i was on working hard on that um i have increasingly long white grayish hair um and a bit less shaven today um i'm i'm kind of it's a a George Michael stubble going on at the moment, actually. And I'm wearing a lovely purple T-shirt, which is from my swimming club. It's one of my coaching tops for Orion Swimming Club. Um, it's purple and gold, which is to do with the fact that we had our 50th anniversary as a club a couple of years ago. So it's from then. I am Josh Sergener. I'm also one of the hosts of Together TV. And I am a university student. Um, I have kind of mid to long uh, blonde hair. That's definitely blonde, if anyone's unsure. It's not ginger. <laughs> it's 100% blonde. Uh, any gingerness yeah. any gingerness is purely dirt. Um, it's got nothing to do with the actual hair colour. Um, and I am wearing a uh, grey Chicago Bulls uh, kind of warm-up shooting shirt. Chicago Bulls are a basketball team, for anyone that doesn't know. All I can say is it must be cooler in West Midlands than it is in East London. That old ginger filter, it gets you all the time. So I'm <laughs> I've got short red henna hair, um, black framed glasses. Today I have a green T-shirt on which says offline, um, which is a slogan. We were talking on Monday about Mental Health Awareness Week, which is also going to be the subject today or one of the subjects, and I thought when we were discussing cyberbullying, it would be a good point to talk about, and just anxiety around the internet, about the times when it's actually quite a good thing to switch off. Julie. Hi, I'm Julie. Uh, I've got silver and gold hair, very messy today, uh, black t-shirt, uh, dark rimmed glasses. And I have a pink microphone. Julie has a purple microphone. Behind us, we have a, well, you can see a little bit of our very wonderful Together 2012 graffiti banner, which has images on it of all the different activities we do. Painting, photography, music, spoken word, filmmaking, performance, theatre. I can't see the things immediately behind me. But also, very importantly, there's a cup and saucer because we like to do everything over a cup of tea. And that's one of the things that we've been really missing is all those communal chats. So we're really glad to be chatting with each other and viewers out there today. So to recap from Monday, this week is Mental Health Awareness Week and the theme is kindness. So we talked a bit on Monday about what it meant to be kind. Robin made the really important point that you have to be kind to yourself before you can be kind to anybody else. And we talked about definitions about 
respecting people's needs, not assuming that because you did something that you thought was best for them, that it was best for them, kind of allowing people to determine what was kind. And I think we also talked about that kind of how easy it is to be kind and how just by being kind, there is a real ripple effect through society. We've got on our Together Unlocked Highlights page a link through to Mental Health Awareness Week in their website where they have lots of research to prove this. But effectively, what they were saying is it's absolutely true. If you're kind to somebody else, you literally do spread love around and there's never been a better time to do that. But Julie was talking on Monday about how very unkind people can be on the internet and we were also talking before we went on air about bad hair days and lockdown hair and a conversation that I think a lot of people have had with me as well, which is that just generally they feel very anxious around video calls. So I thought we could start off by talking a little bit about some of those anxieties and when it's good to switch off. And then later in the second half of our show, we're going to be talking about how a sports psychology can teach us how to manage our anxiety, including our performance anxiety as artists if we feel very anxious about going live on stage. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, Julie, did you ha want to start off perhaps with that sort of sense of when you should just withdraw from the internet for a while for your own good? I think if people start to feel uncomfortable um, or unhappy or feel that some of the things that are being said to them sting. So if they feel ouch, I think ouch is a very good uh, way of measuring that something doesn't feel quite right. Um, and I think there's lots of different ways of doing that. If you're directly speaking to somebody, just absolutely retreat by saying, I'm so sorry, I need to take a break now, or I am going to have a cup of tea and I'll speak to you later or tomorrow or next week or I am going to have a cup of tea full stop. Uh, so withdrawing from this conversation. Uh, I think it's important to remember that you do have an off and on switch and if things get too abusive, just turn it off. Uh, but I think the key thing is to self-monitor and if you are feeling uncomfortable about something, that's there for a reason. It hasn't just happened. You're not necessarily oversensitive or any of the derogatory things we say about ourselves I think you know just trust yourself and trust how you're feeling I think that's a really good point um I mean does any of this resonate with you I mean you've got quite a young family I know teenagers can be very cruel you see lots of reports of cyber bullying and whatsapp have you got any perspectives as a parent or Josh as a young person um, I think that, I mean, Emily, in terms of anxiety, really doesn't like going on camera, um, which is particularly difficult at the moment because they're doing school through the internet and, and she does find it quite invasive. She wants to choose when she has to be on camera and not be made to be on camera. Um, and I think that also, you know, the... Um, the ease with which somebody can um, anonymously or, or, you know, without you knowing who it is, say something which any individual could take personally. And I think that the trouble is that, that you know, it's very easy to read something, well, that was about me um, or that affects me. And I think back to the old days before um, internet and, and email and stuff, when uh, people used to write letters to the BBC and there used to be a, a, a complaints show. I can't remember for the life of me what it was called, but they would always, there'd be a letter that started, why, oh, why, oh, why? And to me, that's the point not to respond. If that's what I'm thinking, that would be my turning off point. I mean, I've made the mistake and, you know, written some really strong um response to something and then you know, i usually show it to josh who goes dad don't send that <laughs> <laughs> i'll, I'll go <laughs> yeah i don't necessarily have a stop filter when it comes to email but there was a campaign a few months before lockdown about just 
you know, just block a troll. Don't respond to them. Just block them. And I had responded to a couple of trolls. And the first time I just blocked them, it felt a little bit odd. And then I thought, no, this is absolutely the right thing to do. And I liked what Judy was saying about you don't have, nobody has the right to force you to engage in a conversation. I had a very abusive landlord bought the house next door and is some, shall we say, breached more than a few planning regulations. So we've had words. And if he wants to talk to me, as far as he's concerned, he's got the right to have a conversation for as long as he likes. And I will say something like, I'm a disabled person. I need to go and lie down now. I'm a disabled person. I'm in the middle of my meal. And he will scream at me. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Well, so what? I'm not talking to you. You know, nobody has to force you to be part of a verbal exchange that you don't want to be part of. I think it's very difficult. You know, we've talked about the pressure of being locked down to with each other. And I think we all talked on Monday about the importance of your lockdown with other people of having space and being able to have different parts of the house, the flat, the bungalow. You know, even if it's just the ability to lock yourself in the bathroom for 10 minutes, everybody should have that right to just a bit of time out and to have that time out respected. And for people who feel they're not being respected, then I really would urge you to look at some of the help that's available out there. We have an engagement support worker. You can reach him via the email address that's at the bottom of this screen, info at together2012.org.uk. If you want any help in terms of signposting to organisations that give support around domestic violence, bullying or mental health or any of those related areas, please do get in touch with us and we'll try and put you on to whoever we think can deal with it best. Isn't that right, Julie? So do we have any more thoughts on kindness and particularly kindness when it comes to disability? Because all four co-hosts and indeed our lovely writer in residence are in the shielding group. I noticed they don't talk about isolation anymore, but it does feel pretty isolated. Um, any suggestions in terms of mental health for dealing with those things? I think the best thing really is just kind of, you know, reach out to, to someone, reach out to a friend, you know, whether you're kind of checking on them, you know, for, for their mental health or if you need a little bit yourself, you know, either say, you know, can we have a chat? I'm, I'm feeling a bit down, but it goes back to the, you know, the whole kind of idea is if you're kind to, to somebody else, then that kindness, kindness comes back on you. You know, if, if you kind of, instigate that chat with your your friend you know nine times out of ten they're probably going to kind of give you that courtesy back um you know if, if you don't want to kind of directly ask for help um even if there's nothing wrong for, about asking for help but if you are kind of nervous about it um yeah if you kind of go in as, as checking in on somebody else um then they're probably going to kind of then check in on you um yeah, yeah. i mean as a family we're oh. Sorry, as as a family, we are we are part of a church community in Sutton Coldfield, um, and actually, it's really nice when somebody phones up and goes, "How you doing?" You know, and it, and it, they're not they they you know they are acts of kindness. They're not doing it for any other reason than just to share some of the burden of how you might be feeling, um, and then it no matter how bad you might have been feeling. That kind of gives you a fillip, you know, a, a lift, um, and then and then you think, oh, do you know what? I'll phone Auntie whoever or you know the neighbour or whoever it is, and it kind of it does, you know, that 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 kindness does literally engender more kindness. I, I think those are really important points about reaching out, and I think Josh, I think what you said about being in contact with other people is is critical because it does break down isolation but I think for myself where I've had an awful lot of support is in random emails from friends and relatives about um, spring bulbs uh, trees flowering in gardens them finding a, a, a frog um, or I found this article on shipwrecks. Isn't it fascinating? Do you want to share it with me? What's your thoughts? Um, or, you know, sort of like I, I was looking at um, 
a picture of a castle that I've never been to. Uh, I'd love to go because it's only in Kent. And it's actually sharing those and being able to anticipate a time when we're no longer in lockdown and to be able to think ahead and make plans to be with friends and loved ones and people who really matter uh, and know that in the meantime, we are still in touch with each other. And I think that's a really good point. And I think also, you know, you may be hearing this and thinking, well, actually, I don't have anyone to reach out to or the last, I just don't want to let people know that I'm feeling like this. There are lots of other options. If you're based in Newham, there is this new organisation, well, I say organisation, there is a new service called Newham Chat. It's entirely confidential, anonymous and free. We'll be putting that phone number up. And it is just literally, if you're feeling down, you want to reach out, have a chat, there's Newham Chat. It may be we talked a bit on Monday about people not always being able to be their true selves if they're locked down with their family and friends who perhaps don't know they're gay. There's Gay Switchboard and various other services. Again, completely open, non-judgmental, private, anonymous. And of course, if you're feeling really miserable or indeed have any kind of mental health difficulty, there's always the Samaritans, again, free, anonymous, confidential, private. They've heard everything before. There is absolutely nothing you could tell any of these people that they haven't heard before. I mean, we had a call the other day from, not Newham Chat, but it was the sort of service that they've set up to just check in on people. And, you know, Judy came away saying, what a lovely woman. So, you know, don't assume it's going to be your usual experience of service providers. These people genuinely are nice and kind as well. I think it's time to move on. So before we bring in our writer, Penny Pepper, to talk about these things, we always have a some kind of not exactly comedy pet film on a Wednesday, but in, on a Wednesday, we usually see the outside world through the eyes of Precious Newman, Julie's assistant's dog who goes out with a GoPro and films the outside world for us. Today, we've got a film from Stara Plurger and Hannah Facey about Stara's, Stara's dog, Merlot. Merlot is an autism support dog and because they live in a flat, Merlot hasn't actually been as far as no further rather than the balcony since lockdown began. So this is called My Dog is a Good Dog and because of our system, I am just going to take a moment to find it. Wasn't that lovely? And yes, Olo, you're a very, very good, good dog. dog. Yeah. <laughs> so now, if I can find our lovely Penny Pepper, who's hopping backwards and forwards on this system that we use here. Sorry, Penny. Let me um, just get rid of something for a minute. Hello. Hello, Penny. Penny. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hi, Penny. You. So you're a symphony in pink, and for anybody who <laughs> Penny, she, she has, has, I think she's going to be dyed pink hair. Piled up Lightly, yes, I've got it in a bun. Uh, 
with a hairpiece, <laughs> of course. Um, and I'm wearing a pink cotton dress with lovely green and pink creamy flowers because the sun is out in Hastings. Um, so I thought I'd, I'd scrub up a bit today. I think it's good. It is good for mental health to just say yes. I will put on a favourite outfit today and you know even if it's hard i think it's good for us to do that effort not like to anyone's remit to your remit of what you feel good about so you know uh with me that can that can take a few an hour or so but i still i still love uh dressing up and putting my makeup on every now and again and you've got a lovely pink backdrop and i can also see behind you I think is that the cover of one of your books? I can see Penny Pepper and I can see Pink, but I'm not sure. What it's what it is. It's like my little um, uh, my it's 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 like my little I don't know what they're called, like my little table display. So that my lovely PR lady Tracy did for me. So it just says Penny Pepper um, is is resident now or something so it's just like a little display i use i used it last year at the together party in fact yes because you've been our virtual writer in residence for some time and now we're all doing everything virtual so um, that was very much ahead of the game wasn't it Penny? it was it was due we did it when it wasn't so fashionable or at least essential <laughs> <laughs> and i when I first met you, I knew you mostly as a poet and a singer, but now, of course, you've got a number of books to your name. Mm. You're also enjoying through a store a nice drink, which is something that I've been gasping for. Sorry, well. yeah, it, it, it's um, while I was on mute, my PA Janet um, came and made me a nice coffee. And I noticed Robin's had his water bottle out. <laughs> And again, it's really important to stay hydrated. I know it's the last few days of Ramadan and that despite the Muslim Council of Great Britain and the NHS, a number of people have felt that actually it's really important for them to come off, even though they've got longer term health conditions. But I think with this heat wave, it you know, it's very much worth, yeah, just maybe thinking about that. I, I got a text from the NHS myself, even though in fact I'm not of faith and therefore wouldn't have been fasting. So I know there's great concern this year because the hospitals are not so able to cope, but also people's health has already been affected by lockdown. You know, fasting is a difficult thing to do at the best of times. And if you're in a group that's been told not to fast because you're in a shielding group or you're a nursing, you're in a caring profession, you're otherwise a people while it's so terribly hot over the next 24 hours, you know, do think about drinking enough water. I felt like I must put that one in. So thank you for the examples. Penny, what have you been doing this week? Are you still doing live streaming? I know you weren't terribly well last week. No, I wasn't very well last week. Thankfully, not COVID, but just, uh, you know, those of us that are getting on a bit, we we do get little uh, aches and pains, <laughs> and uh, I just had some uh, issues with um, an upset tummy and and being very tired. But I feel much better now. And also, I had on point really. I had my counselling on Friday. I'm lucky beyond lucky really that I have um, a counsellor who, after my official sessions were done agreed to see me for free and so now we have um a counseling session on the phone every two weeks and uh, i am extremely grateful to him for allowing me to continue with that because there isn't anything for me within the nhs and we can get onto that a bit later but yeah, I've, I've actually been writing a little bit and I think I've said I'm reading my novel uh, cover to cover, ready for the final work on it when my agent's back from a furlough next week. Um, so it's, it's that's quite exciting. Always the usual thing, Ju. We're always on the one hand. Right, writers earn absolutely peanuts generally. Um 
And so I'm always trying to do bits and pieces to get the book selling. Um, and it, it's like a bit of my chip on my shoulder that uh, I know my memoir, which I know you were very lovely about and you, you enjoyed, and lots of friends have done amazing things for me, but the publisher's still saying, oh, it didn't sell as well as we hoped. And I, I, it, it's a bit of a, you know, the, the chip. Or I should say it's like a goblin on my shoulder that I, I, I want to prove they're wrong about it and people love it. So I, I'm, I do a lot of social media around that. And I think over the weeks or I should say months to come, because I don't think any of us in the Shielding group think we're going to be out and about any time soon. This is the kind of issue we will keep coming back to. You know, how do you progress your work? as an artist or as a disabled person and i think yeah there's there's huge issues there that perhaps we won't discuss now Before no just just one thing can i say one thing quickly Drew? it's because it is in some ways it's simple is that we we live in this obsessive uh, celebrity culture i'm hoping that might ease off a bit after lockdown but and because of that it's almost like you can only be successful by being a celebrity but you're you know in the olden days you're a celebrity because you've done something so i you know i think there's there is a, a bigger discussion to be had around that and uh, all i can say to writers out there is is value yourself and keep going Absolutely. So before we move on to Penny's first poem, I was just going to say that was, we picked this up last week because one of the things we were talking about last week, or at least it came up because it had been in the news, was people not going to hospital if they need to go to hospital. And we go to example of Penny, who was very sensible because she went to hospital. And given that still seems to be an ongoing issue, I need to say that again. You know, if you're ill, the NHS is still the first place you should ring. Don't yeah. think it's going to feel better tomorrow, particularly if you've got an underlying condition. But if you're somebody who never feels ill and you suddenly feel just a little bit off, I think you can assume that that too, you know, should still be looked at. You know, don't put anything off. In fact, if anything, you know, don't put it off even if you would have done before lockdown because... You don't want the NHS to have to wait till it gets really bad and then have to deal with something that they could have dealt with very quickly at the beginning. What what I'd like what I'd like to say on that, Drew, is when I went to the hospital, which by the way is in Euston, so you can't really get more central. And I was a bit nervous, but they wanted me to come in, have my regular treatment, which is as a day patient. And I had to go there and back from Hastings in a day. That was probably the toughest thing, the, dr the drive with my PA. But it was that, you know, we love the NHS and we trust them. We should. It was so thoroughly orchestrated to be safe. We, we were led a certain way. The hospital was sectioned off. So there was no overlap there. We had the sanitizing stations we all wore masks we had to wear masks within the hospital and throughout the clinic so i actually felt very safe and i would encourage anyone who feels nervous about that um we we need to trust them that they'll make it safe for us and we've got a part to still play in that of course by not um you know, or encouraging those around us not to unnecessarily break the lockdown. Absolutely. So, Penny, you're going to read us a poem now, and then we're going to move on to our usual Paralympics before we talk about sports psychology and what that can help us tell us about dealing with anxiety, but also dealing with performance anxiety. A lot of us feel very nervous before we go on stage, as we were talking about, that people can feel very nervous just about having a video camera on them. So, Penny, I'm going to put you all nice and central to read your poem. OK, so thank you, everybody. Um, this is called Not My Cuts, and it's quite um, an in-your-face poem. Um, it does touch on mental health issues, so just giving that as a, 
a little warning. Um, I am from that tribe and have been for a very long time. I'm on the spectrum for borderline personality disorder and have uh, primarily issues, really acute issues with anxiety. So this is called Not My Cups. It's not my cups, it's never the cups that make me shut inside my heart. You make a mark, your cal calamitous grasp, not easy to part. And me, gone mad, hideous, mad, bad, from new to trad, recalcitrant, sad, so often had, cut out, sad, sad. There can be blood and chewing the cud of pills, blue, rushed, face in the mud, redundant, not loved. When is it enough? Black tears to flood. It's not the knife, the redolent strife, confusion rife, the rip and the tear, the treacherous fear of you, unclear, of you, of me, of me, alive and still here. Thank you. That was lovely. Thank you, Penny. And um, I'm not pressing this little button to make me bigger than everybody else. It's just the way it <laughs> comes up in the system, for which we say a thank you, B dot Live Studio, which is the platform we're using. It doesn't always work perfectly, but it is all really very accessible. So I think Penny had some very important points, and I thought that was a really powerful poem. Did anybody want to say anything in response? Yeah, I, I like the ending, Pen. Um, <laughs> you're Thank still here, and long may it continue. Thank you. Thank you. It is a, it's about um, it is about that journey of coming from a terrible place to a place of survival. Um, so you know. that's exactly what we were talking about on Monday, wasn't it? Is it's surviving and identifying as survivors? Yeah. And you talked a little bit, didn't you, Judy, about why you identified as a survivor? But yeah, yeah I, th I think it's like all these things. Disability art is not about sitting there going, oh, isn't everything dreadful? That can be because mm. it's more driven, I think, by rage. <laughs> one, one, quick, one quick thing I'd like to say, Drew, is about Mental Health Awareness Week, which I think is a great thing. But we do have to be careful uh, that it's not just uh, tokenistic. And um, I've been chatting sort of uh, briefly with Joe Cox, our lovely Joe Cox, um, who has similar mental health issues to me. And we just say it, it can get a little bit, it's all over Twitter, it's all on social media and whatever. But unless people really do what they say they're doing, it becomes empty. Um, and the fact that, for instance, I don't get any men, I get no mental health support on the NHS anymore. None. Um, it's like I've had it and now it's finished. Um, and that that's why I took the effort to find something for myself, because borderlines generally need support for life. But it, it is crazy that it is we do we need kindness between each other, but we need to realise um without getting too political today but that there, there there is a little bit of a hypocrisy with governments in saying they are doing stuff and then the the bottom line those of us at grassroots not getting anything so i think if we keep that awareness in there then this week is a good thing yeah, and I don't think as well as far as i can see it's got nothing to do with the government so have you got your teddy bear ready, Robin and Josh? Because this is... <laughs> that looks to me like a carrot. It's a sprint it's carrot. It's, it's still a teddy. Let's, let's not... Okay. Let's not... In the West Midlands, they have very strange ideas about teddy bears. I'm very much hoping... Listen, that... you, you, can't, you can't box us into what a teddy bear should be, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not. So if you're a young person or indeed an older person taking part in the virtual teddy bear hunt, please don't box the teddy bear in. <laughs> uh, so this is our teddy. It's I was forced to describe the last one as an average-looking teddy bear. It's 
insulting, but this is a little brown bear in a little pink ballet tunic with a little pink ribbon tied around its head. It's got a little pink heart on one foot, and it is called Anna. And Anna is competing for the right to wear a plastic gold medal as given out in the London 2012 system. Robin, I don't know okay. what you can say about your carrot, but without further ado, as we have dropped a little bit behind, I'm just wondering if you can let me know when I put the film up whether you would prefer the right or the left competitor. This is uh, the, the blue, the blue blanketed uh, competitor. So this is going to be right or left. We're looking at the screen, waving our right hand. That is the right, Judy. So, um, Josh, can you tell me right or left, please? Uh, whichever one has the blue oh, blanket. I don't know till it starts. And if because I... we can't, yeah, we can't see. So I don't know which yeah, one's Yeah, we can't see the there's, thing. There's, so there's, there's, uh, it's just a right. knee. Penny, could you choose right or left for me, please? Penny. Uh, can I do what? You, you broke up then, June. Can you choose right or left? Um, I will choose left. Right. Okay. I mean, left, left. Fine. We win. Yay! But it's the one on the right that won. The blue blanketed one on our right. Oh. But it was your left. It's very confusing. <laughs> that is We're going, the blue blanket was the defining term. I'm going to let you put your real medal on because the Surgeon family have so many to choose from. But when I watch <laughs> this show back, I might end up thinking not for the first time that the rules have been slightly misinterpreted. <laughs> Ta -da. Surgeon as being para-athletes and elite para-athletes and coaches at that. They claim to be the most competitive family in the world. So we race clockwork toys for the right to have the medal. <laughs> so what's your medal today, Robin and Josh? Uh, yeah, this, this, is, this is actually one of a, a collection. This is from actually the Stourbridge Swimming Club Crystal Meat. Um, in many many years gone by, they always used to give out actual crystal goblets at the pool, um, but they had to for health and safety stop that. So now they bring crystal goblets to the what they would call the Victrix and Victor Ladorum, being the best female and the best male athlete of the day. And race winners at individual level get one of these really nice medals, actually. And it, it's you know it's, it's generally in an age group gala, so it's kids from nine to 16 you do get a few older but the kind of this level gala where this is one of actually ej's medals um you know is a really great way of encouraging kids to take part yes i was going to think there was a little bit too much information and also wondering why we don't give artists medals we come from <laughs> the cultural legacy of the london 2012 games but many years ago, when they started the Olympics, they actually had used to have art competitions. So that is a very good link, though I say it myself, to point out that the Paralympic World Art Cup is still taking entries until June. You can find the details on our Together TV Unlocked Highlights page. And we encourage all disabled artists from the UK to enter. It would be wonderful to see a British winner. They intend to fly the winner out to Tokyo this November. I'm not entirely convinced that will happen, but certainly at some point the winner will actually go to Tokyo in person, which I think will be rather fabulous. So the theme of this programme is not Mental Health Awareness Week, but to join in from home, be creative, stay home, stay well. But we like to combine things. We usually in this slot talk about what's happening with virtual sport and gaming, but because it is a special week, Josh is also going to start us off by talking about sports psychology. 
And in particular, we're looking at anxiety in life, anxiety in front of the camera, and particularly anxiety around live performance, because that for artists is such a such a big deal. So start us off, Josh. Um, yeah, so this is kind of sports psychology from uh, my experience as an athlete and a coach and bits of sports psych that I've picked up from kind of working alongside psychologists and at uni. Um, I am by no means a psychologist. Um, but kind of the biggest thing around uh, anxiety, um, be that general life anxiety or performance anxiety, um, is about kind of control and confidence. Um, so if we take the the point of performance um be that you know as an athlete a race as, as a performer the the point when you walk on stage um or you know it it could be when you get to the till at the corner shop and you need to pay for your sandwich um whatever that end point is um we call a key moment um, and the, there's kind of two key things that that build up to performance in that key moment. Um, the kind of foundational one being self-esteem. Um, if you can build self-esteem, that builds self-confidence. And then kind of self-esteem and confidence together give you this kind of belief that you can, that can perform. Um, and... I think a really good way to to do that rather than just telling yourself I'm going to be confident or I'm going to feel good um which is great but if you are struggling with anxiety it's like when you're angry and someone tells you to calm down it almost has the opposite effect um there's something that um I took from a, a psychologist who works for Swim England um is to actually make something tangible um you know kind of set yourselves we'll use the we we'll use the example of kind of performing a, a, a poem um at an event you will plan out all of the little things that you you need to do in order to get ready for that performance writing your poem practicing the poem picking your outfit you know where are you going to stand all of these different things um but rather than just kind of having a, a, a mental idea of all of these things, each time you accomplish something on, on that goal, every time you practice it, uh, you know, make a, a, a paper chain or write on a post-it and pop it in a drawer um, or in a bag, you know, for two weeks, three months, six months, a year, whatever it is, kind of leading up to it and then, the night before or the morning of that you're going to be performing rather than just trying to remember what you can actually do is you can go and get that paper chain or you can get that bag of post-it notes and you can see this you know kind of pile of, of, of evidence that shows you no i can do this i am ready i am prepared um you know and then you can you know you can flick through you can pick a post-it note and say oh on the 26th of july i practiced it three times with no faults and um you know and that can really help kind of you know give you that that belief that self-confidence that you can do it um and it kind of brings in into the the final thing because i don't want to kind of go into too much detail um around controlling the controllables um and kind of having a, a feeling of control that's it's internal, um, which means you, there's kind of two ways to think about it. You can have internal control, which is the, the things that you do affect you. So how much you prepare and things like that. Um, or you can have external that it's to do with luck and, um, and kind of the sport, everything around sports psychology is ideally we want to have that, that internal control, um, you know you, you are 
everything that you can manage you do manage and and things that are out of your control try not to let those things stress you out so if you get to a venue and you know you spent six months preparing um, and you get there and the event organizers haven't put the ramp out um for the stage if you can kind of you know think back to that that evidence that bag of evidence and you've got that internal control and, and everything you've done as much as you can to prepare you can then say oh excuse me can you put a ramp out you know because because in yourself you're you're controlling that anxiety and you're prepared whereas if you kind of went the other way you could get there and you kind of run the risk of panicking and you know oh my god this has gone wrong what else is gonna you know um and you know it, it's very easy to kind of sit here on an internet live stream and tell you to do these things and um, you know I, i'm very lucky that i don't kind of struggle with anxiety um to in terms of that anyway um i thought it's been kind of very helpful josh i mean i think the first thing you said that really struck me was the self-confidence and self-esteem because we say in the aims and objectives for our clubs program which are these free creative workshops that we run every weekday morning in more usual times that are open to all disabled people is our two key aims are improve your self-confidence and improve your self-esteem then it's improve your social networking because that all helps as we've just talked about if you've got friends you can reach out to and only then do we say creative skills because it's that self-confidence and self-esteem that you need to make the most of those creative skills isn't it I, can i just pick up something as well josh because i think what you're saying is extraordinarily helpful and i think it's a very good example actually about getting to a venue and not having a ramp i think if we continue to follow the social model it'll be very much along the lines of I need to be on that platform so that you can hear me, which is what you've booked me for. How is that going to happen? And give it back to them. I mean, I'm going to yeah. put this one to you, and I don't know if Penny's <laughs> waving. Is um, the um, I'm afraid I'm a bit more of a stropper than that. So the <laughs> moment you started talking about that, I'm so, I get there and I think God, it has taken me so much effort from you know, it's like your carrier bag. You know, my bin line is full of stuff that it takes me to get somewhere over a period of years. And then they say, oh, no, no, we've got no, no, no blue badge parking. Oh, no, you can't park here after all. We haven't got a ramp. And, yeah, I mean, if I'm booked to appear, I usually give a message to say, yes, you're, you're on the screen, live, Penny. So I usually, yeah, I usually say, well, look, you've booked me, so I want my money, but I'm off. You can find the parking space, <laughs> find the ramp. And um, and very possibly I shouldn't go from. I mean, I think, again, it's that sense of being in pain and being fatigued, but also probably underlying anxiety that being able to sort of, yeah, take a deep breath. Um, Can I just add to that? Bring Penny in here, shall we? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, my cat, Pixie, just jumped through the window and I thought she was going to come over, but she's not looking uh, promising. Now, I... Um, Obviously, I've done this for so many years, um, and yeah, in my young when I was younger, and people don't realise it, I was so shy and so ragged with anxiety that I touch upon it in my memoir that I I would just sink into frozen states even when I was doing music. I could never do banter or chat or engage with the audience. So I also think anything in this area is is often practice and having, yeah, learning confidence and learning to value yourself and what you're doing as a very, very baseline beginning. And also worry, don't worry about what's not important. As many of you know, I do not memorise my work because, and I was guided on that at a masterclass by a poetry organisation called Apples and Snakes, you were great, that actually they're not there to see how well you remember something. They're there to enjoy the poem. You're not being an actor. So, but And I've taken this on now in classes I've run where it does help. Um, 
as um sorry i've forgotten your name josh josh was saying about make, get things ready if you can if you if you've got anxiety in all these issues of course it helps if you've got someone a friend or mentor who can help you with it because i never ever take a ramp for granted um when i did showing off now but i can't help it when i did the royal albert hall um 18 months ago they didn't have a ramp to the cabaret stage <laughs> and uh my management just thought when we're like oh it'd be fine of course they know what you need and then that just in time I checked and they didn't. They hadn't thought of it. And I just, this is another thing. Rather than letting, letting them off the hook, and I'm never stroppy. I don't have strop within me, and that's probably related to my anxiety. I can in my words, but not in this kind of argument, um, even though I know I've got a right to be that. Um, I let them squirm in it so they can sort it out. It would be, well... I am going to be as I have equality to the performing space. Yeah, there's not think... a question. There's not a question of me doing that. If that's I've been hired to do it, I'm being paid to do it. I'm not doing it in front of the stage, which I did in the early days. Um, so, final thing, final thing, Joe. Just that when you do when you're doing a piece, if it's a poem. And it's not a thing about you have to learn it. Do it with flourish. It makes you feel so much better. Thank you for that. So we're coming towards the end of our show. We're just looking at another cat wandering in here. I should say for anybody who doesn't usually watch the show, we do have a number of cats in each of our venues which appear or disappear with well, whenever they want to, really. So we're going to ignore the cats and flag up Friday. Friday, we have a dressing up to go out to stay in, where you see us all in, not necessarily ridiculous outfits, but oh, I just see one of the cats has escaped from the downstairs office. So trying to stay live and on a schedule, particularly because everybody has to rush off at four o'clock. On Friday, we dress up to go out to stay in. We very much welcome your photos, your videos of you dressed up, whether that's to go clubbing, to protest at Parliament, to go to the moon or under the sea. Um, we also have our regular feature, Something for the Weekend, where we look at what's available online and make our recommendations. We have poetry from ACT UP and Paisa. We have dance pieces from Ellen Goody and from Arwa. Keep sending that work in. We're loving it. Oh, there's David Noble who sent us in some artwork in a poem. So we're going to be continuing with the Mental Health Awareness Week theme but also very much celebrating our viewers and our associate artists' creativity and talent. So we're going to finish in a minute with another penny, another poem from Penny, or another Penny poem, at which point she will be on the screen to herself and we will be catching cats. Um, that should be fun. Not quite sure what's been going on downstairs, but I strongly suspect our assistance dog could now work out how to open the office door, even though it's got a Yale lock on it. All that training is not very helpful. The more bored they get in lockdown, the more they find to do. So it's a goodbye from me, Jude Gosling, Artistic Director of Together 2012 in East London. And goodbye from me, Julie. And it's goodbye from me, Robin Sergener, in Sutton Caulfield. And goodbye from me, Josh Sergener, also in Sutton Caulfield. So we're going to say thank you again to our lovely writer-in-residence, Penny Pepper. This is called A Sonnet for Blues and Rain, and it's about finding hope within anxiety, within sadness, in uh, music and nature. I heard the blues seduce the rain tonight while owls sang songs to say that spring won't come. They lurk in trees and whisper far from sight. The blank sky shrugs down darkness. 
there among the leaves I hid my heart and head and tears, drenched in the song the blues man gave to me, longing in my blood made sweeter with years. Dark branches sway, they're full of melodies. It's not lost love that cuts inside my soul, it's his true words that cry across the rain. But he sings the howling blues, he's in control, heals all my scars tonight, laps up my pain. I will live for hidden owls, trees and hope, that blues man's electric kaleidoscope. Thank you and goodbye. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. Bye, Ju. Bye. Bye, bye. Do you want to bye. just tell us the name of your book again? Of my book. Yes, let's have a last plug for that book. <laughs> there we go. Come home alive. Available easily online and on online bookstores come home live by penny pepper with the infamous cover thank you Ju. and we'll see you again next week penny see you next week bye everybody